Okay, so in this video, we are going to be covering some port forwarding. We're going to be looking at local port forwarding. We're going to be looking at dynamic port forwarding, and we are going to be looking at a double jump SSH. And these are going to be really important if you want to be a penetration tester. You will need to know how to do this if you are going to do the OSCP. I believe it's in the EJPT as well. I also know that if you're going to do any of the hack the box labs, you're going to need to know how to do these different types of port forwarding. So you will need to know Know this so if you aren't ready to learn this you can go ahead and bookmark this video and come back to it and in the future I'm actually going to show you how to set up this lab that we're going to be using in this specific video but for now what I'm going to show you is how to do these different types of port forwarding and then I think in the very near future in the next couple of weeks I'm going to show you how to actually set up this lab it doesn't take too long maybe about 10 minutes but you will need a computer that can run at least three virtual machines at the same time. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into it. Okay, so here we are at our attack box. This box is just Kali Kali, and it is outside of the private network that we have over here. And so we have this box over here, and it is just PHD sec one right here. And it doesn't have any ports open except for SSH. And then over here, we have a, another box over here, and it is called PHD sec two. And I changed the names just so you be able to see that we are moving between different machines so this one we are going to run juice shop right here i have already started juice shop and if you want to learn how to install juice shop and practice on juice shop um, i'll link that video in the description so we are running juice shop so if we come out here and we go to firefox and then we visit our local host 3000 this is going to go ahead and take us to juice shop so you need to know how to access a web server from inside of a network so we're going to come inside of this first box right here from our attacks box we're going to ssh in here pretending that we have found some credentials and then we are going to scan this local network we're going to find that we have another machine over here that actually is running a web server and we need to access this web server in, a, in order to exploit it so that's where we're going it sounds really complicated and often when i think about doing things like this um, what comes to mind is the movie inception we're going to be going inside of a virtual machine inside of a virtual machine then we're going to move around inside that virtual network so that's where we're going so we'll start out really simply so let's say we have taken over this box right here this is going to be our jump box so we have access to this box and what we're going to do is we're just going to give an arp a and we're going to see that there is another box right here so what we would want to do is be able to access the ports on that box so what we have to do from over here is just a really simple dynamic port forwarding and it looks like this and you remember we grabbed this phd sec one from our username pretending that we have found credentials on a web server or maybe through some smb shares and so we have this right here and we know the ip address because it was in our network range of the boxes that we are attacking so we can go ahead and run this and actually before we run this i'll show you um, how you would set this up you would need to sudo gedit your proxy chains and it should be set up just automatically if you're on a kali machine because you scroll all the way to the bottom and it's going to have this I'm, i believe by default and i think we're using strict chains uh, so it doesn't really matter. I think it's automatically set up. I didn't change anything in order to be able to do this. So we can come back over here and I'll just copy this and we'll paste it in. And so we're going to go ahead and SSH over into this box and you can see our name has changed right here. So now we are inside of this box over here. So if we run an if config, we are going to see that we're inside of this private network right here. So we're inside of a private network and we can now it run our ARP A and you're going to see that we have this other box right here that's inside of our network. This is the one, this is the IP that we're currently at and this is the IP right here that we need to be able to have access to. So what we can do at this point is just leave this right here and we can open up a new tab and we can type in proxy chains and we can use proxy chains to run an in-map scan. And so I've already ran this just to check to make sure it works and we can run it on port 22, which we know is open because SSH is open for 3000 that's what our web server is running on and then uh, we'll run a couple other than just 21 i want you to see what it looks like when you have closed ports so we can go ahead and run this and we have an okay right here and an okay right here and it tells us the server has run out or the server has timed out and so proxy chains is going to say that we want to 
which we set up over here when we ran our dynamic port forwarding right here. It is going to allow us through port 9050 to access everything inside of a proxy chain. So we can run proxy chains and access everything that this, that this machine right here with this IP has access to. And so this 9050, we get this port from our Etsy config, Etsy proxy chains config file, which I showed you earlier when we did this G edit, wherever it is right here. So I showed you where that port was coming from and it's gonna have an S I believe for strict chains when it runs over here. Yeah, strict chains right there. And so it's running strict chains, th strict chain through our local port through 9050 and is going out to the IP address that we are running our dynamic port forward on wherever it is right here. And we, it'll test this port not open, port 21 not open, port 22 is open, port 3000 is open right here. So on our in-map scan, it tells us right here it's open and we know that we have a server running because I showed it to you right here. So this would be something you might see or on an in-map scan that would pull down and it would tell you it is a web server. So now let's go ahead and actually access this web server on this machine right here. So this is going to be a little bit tricky. It's, re it's really not that hard to run. It's really hard to wrap your mind around the first couple of times that you run it. So we'll go ahead and we'll exit out of this and you'll see that we are no longer PhD sec. We are Kali back on our attack machine. Uh, we can just leave that how it is. And so what we'll do is we'll run a local port forward. And instead of you watching me type this out, I'll just go ahead and type it out and then bring you back. So I decided we'll go ahead and run just a local port forward before we do any kind of jumping and it gets really complicated. So let's say that we have credentials to access this machine right here and we need to access this web server. You will need to know this in the future. What we can do is we can just run this right here. We're going to local port forward to port 1234. And so when we access our local host 3000, which is going to be this server, I'm going to move these over so we can see them, which is going to be this server right here. We will be able to open up our Firefox and we'll be able to access uh, local host 1234 right here. And it's going to pull open Juice Shop from this machine right here. So what we can do is run this. We're going to need to provide it the password. And we are now PhD sec two, but it's local port forwarding port 3000 to us on port one, two, three, four. So now if we come over here and run this, we have access to juice shop, which is actually running over here on this other server. You will need to know this. You will see this on certification. So if it is confusing, you might have to watch this video a few times and I'm going to make a video that's going to be a lot more in depth. Um, in the future. So you can go ahead and subscribe for that. And I'm going to show you how to set all this up and maybe it will make more sense to you. Then we're just doing a high level overview for now. So that's one way to go ahead and access this. And then another way to access this is going to be through jumping from one box to the other. Okay. So let's say that we need to access this web server and it is inside of a subnet on this box. And so we have to SSH into this box and then we need to be able to SSH from this box to another network in order to access this web server. So what this looks like is gonna look similar to this, only we're gonna use a J here and then we're gonna throw in a dynamic port forwarding. So I'm gonna go ahead and type this out and I'll walk you through it. Okay, so here's what we have. We have this SSH and we're gonna jump from the first box, which would be on one subnet that we're trying to get into. And the only way to access this subnet is through this specific box. And so we're gonna give it a dynamic port forwarding and we're gonna run it through localhost and then our port right here. So we're gonna be able to use proxy chains in order to reach this. So what we can do is we can run this and it's gonna take us from phdsec1 and then it's gonna say phdsec2 and now we have access to this box right here. And I believe we should be able to go proxy chains Firefox. And this should open up Firefox for us. And I think we can go localhost 3000 now. Um, I actually haven't tested this, but if memory serves me right, yeah, we're able to access this through proxy chains um, here on Firefox. So we essentially, let me close out of this so it stops running. What we did is we were able to SSH into our first box right here. And the J, um, I, I'm gonna assume it stands for jump because we're jumping from this first network into a different network and it's gonna be sending back all of the ports on this network or this specific machine in this network that we're not able to reach to us on our local machine through port 9050 and we're able to access that port 3000 through this 
jump to a dynamic report forwarding. So that seems a little complicated. Um, and I guess it kind of is if you've never seen it before. So this is the first time I have ever gone through trying to teach port forwarding. And I'm pretty sure that after recording this, it seems like it's extremely complicated. Um, I don't know why, but in my mind, it's not that complicated. So if you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments because I am currently recording a EJPT preparation course and this is going to be a part of it. And I'm actually going to show you how to set up this lab. So if you made it this far in the video, please let me know down in the comments how I can make this more clear. And if you have any questions about what's going on here, so that way in the future, when I re-record this for that course, I'll be able to help you guys the best that I can. Thanks for watching and thanks for commenting.